Now we're going to talk about the process of attenuation, how we weaken viruses for attenuated vaccines. We're going to mostly talk about measles as an example of the attenuated uh, vaccine process. Um, just know that, for example, all the, the vaccine viruses in the MMR vaccine, that's mumps, rubella, and measles, those are all attenuated viruses in that vaccine. So they're all grouped together. When we talk about the flu shot, remember that that's an inactivated virus vaccine. So that's a very different process with very different ingredients than what we're gonna discuss now. Um, so yeah, make sure that you're checking out that vaccine science PowerPoint that I posted in Blackboard. It has this slide and a lot more written information. The other um, PDF that's gonna be helpful for you, especially if you're not familiar with uh, laboratory practices and how we grow cells in the lab, is um, some back, those PDFs on the background information of how to attenuate a virus. That goes into a lot of detail about the common laboratory practices and the different reagents that we need in order to grow cells in the lab. So be sure that you read that too. Okay, so what does weaken the virus actually mean? So remember, always come back to the big picture and what we're trying to do. We're trying to make a pathogen that will stimulate an immune response and create long-lasting memory without making you sick and without you being contagious. So attenuating is one way in which we do that. And it's actually really neat science behind this. Um, and so we need to remember that a little known fact about viruses is that they're always adapting and evolving um, to meet the demands of the environment. Because remember their goal. Their goal is to replicate and propagate themselves and they want to adapt to their environment so that they can very efficiently replicate. Um, and so mutations are very natural, a part of the viral life cycle, so that if they're put in a new environment, they're going to adapt and mutate so that they can best replicate in that environment. And this is the whole process, the concept behind attenuating a virus, is in general, we put, let's say, the measles virus, we take the human measles virus, we're gonna put it into a new, a different species. So we typically put it, for example, into chicken cells, and we allow, over time, the human measles virus to adapt to this new host, uh, i.e. the chicken cells. And so over time, the virus is going to adapt, mutate little by little, so that when we put the, um, the adapted measles virus back into a human host, it can't replicate efficiently. So it's not going to make you sick and it's not going to make you contagious, but it is going to elicit a long lasting memory response. So back behind me here on the PowerPoint, this is the process of how we attenuate measles virus in a non-human host. So here's our human measles virus. We can also call that a wild type human measles virus. And in the lab, we're gonna do this process of attenuation. Um, and here I have a Petri dish filled with our chicken cells. And it's actually a specific type of cell called a fibroblast. And if you read that PDF, I go into more details about what those cells are. They're just really easy and cheap to grow. That's why we use them. Um, so we've got this Petri dish. We're going to infect these chicken embryo cells with our human measles virus. And at first, the virus is not really able to grow very well because it's adapted to grow in humans. Um, so over time, we let it grow in these chicken cells. And then at the end of that time, we remove the cells or we isolate, sorry, we, we remove the virus, we isolate the virus from these cells. So we have a little vial just full of our slightly mutated uh, measles virus. We're gonna take that vial of virus and we're gonna infect a new Petri dish full of chicken embryo cells. And so we're gonna do this many, many times. So I put here 80, which is kind of an arbitrary number, but just know that it's like 80, 100 times. We do this many times where we isolate virus, we infect a new petri dish full of chicken embryo cells, we isolate the virus, 
we infect, we isolate, and we infect. And then over time, this measles virus has accrued so many mutations is that when we put this attenuated or adapted measles virus back into the human host, it can't replicate efficiently inside the human host. And so it's just enough to elicit an immune response, build the memory, but this does not make you sick and it does not, um, it's not contagious. And the other thing to remember is that we've done this many, many times. So think of all the tiny little mutations that have happened to make this an attenuated measles virus. And so some people are worried that because this is an attenuated virus and not a killed virus, that there's a chance that this virus could mutate back to its original form. But I want you guys to remember that we do this over a hundred times. And so the chances of spontaneously this attenuated measles mutating back, or what we call reverting back to its original thought, that's like a minuscule chance of that happening, like very little chance of that happening. Um, so that's really not an issue. That's only happened once, actually, with polio virus. Um, it was like a one in a billion kind of thing that could happen. Anyway, so overall, this is the attenuation process. Remember, the whole point is to make a virus that, um, that no longer can replicate very well in humans, but it's just enough to elicit that immune response and long-term memory, but not make you sick and not have you be contagious. So it's a really amazing thing that we've learned to do in the lab that's had so much public health benefits. So again, I'm gonna remind you to read that PDF um, that I put in the Blackboard folder because it's gonna go into this um, laboratory practices in a lot more detail. So if you've never been in the lab, please make sure that you read that because this is gonna make a lot more sense once you know those core laboratory practices.